This is the uh, lab three in week three, and it's going to be a relatively short uh, uh, presentation because we have a quiz coming up in the last 30 minutes of this tutorial. There is an activity for you also set up, so you have to uh, watch this, and then you uh, in the lab, if you were in the lab, you did activities after that, and then the, the quiz uh, popped up in the last 30 minutes of the, uh, of, of the lecture presentation, lab presentation. So uh, on the agenda today is a problem that, uh, that I'm doing from chapter 11, except that I will not be using this concept of connections, okay? I will be doing it uh, differently, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, I will talk about local mesh refinement around uh, around in certain areas on the in, in the shell element and they will discuss the uh, the lab problems uh, or the lab activities that you're going to have to do okay so the problem in chapter 11 is a folded sheet metal like that and uh, the edge of this uh, circular hole on the vertical plane is uh, clamped and there is a force of 100 pound applied on that uh, circle the edge of the circle on the top. Now, as soon as you see this, uh, you realize that it has to be done with the most appropriate element, which is shell element here. The thickness of this thing is 0.05. And uh, uh, you have to use as many planes of symmetry as is needed. If you look at this problem, I hope you, see, you realize that you need to do only half of this model. Half of this model, in other words, cutting it that way and that okay and uh, so uh, we're going to use shell elements and half of that the dimensions are given and it also says that the, we want a finer mesh around the holes uh, whatever circular circular sections you got left in the uh, in your uh, half model use a finer mesh around them okay so let me go ahead and do this problem uh, let's start with the let's start with the part file and on purpose i'm going to do this thing differently from how it is done in the book in the book i make a box this size extract the side faces extract the side faces and when you extract it don't forget to join them Okay, don't forget to join join those two side faces. And then, of course, you uh, maybe if you actually, if you use symmetry, you would have liked to do a, 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 a cut in the, in, the, in the box that you made and then uh, extract those, uh, the, the, the half cut box, surface of the cap half cut box so if you want look at the book if you have it otherwise just follow follow the way i'm doing it here by the way uh different versions of this there were the one that i just described to you if you go uh, to uh, my, my channel you will probably see it done exactly like how it's done in the book but i'm doing it differently all right let's go here uh we are in the wireframe and surface design good on that vertical plane i will sketch I'll sketch that inverted uh, thing that I have there, something like that. Exit. And oh, dimension, dimension. Dimensions is this side is five inches. Five. And this side is 10. Okay, exit. Is that 10? Let me measure this thing, make sure this is five. Yeah, that is five and this is 10. Very good. Okay, now we're gonna extrude it. Because I wanna show you how to cut surfaces, split surfaces, I'm gonna do it mirror extend in each direction 2.5. And uh, this is the profile. Two point five. 
there. Later on, I'm going to split that in the middle. But right now, I'll just leave it the way it is. Because of the way I've done it, this top face is actually talking to the bottom face. So when it comes to meshing, I don't have to worry about it. But if you go follow book's approach, then you have to join these. Otherwise, they won't see each other. Now, uh, on that top face, I will sketch a circle. Put it in the right spot. So dimension from here to here is uh, uh, 2.5. Okay, and the dimension, oh, this is in the middle, so I don't have to worry about it. And the radius of this is one, or oh, radius is 0.5. Ra uh, sorry, radius is one, that's what I meant. Diameter is two. Good, exit. Now I can do the same thing, I have to do the same thing on this side, but let me show you how to split. You go here, you see this, see this? Split, element to cut, is that face, is that entire thing, cutting element is this, and there we are. On that face, I will do exactly the same thing, sketch, radius is one, diameter is two, and it's going to be exactly in the middle, so I use Top line, control, bottom line, control, the center of this, and you go to constraints, defining dialog box, and I make it equidistant. You do it any way you want, just make sure it's right. Okay. And then again, I split. Element to cut is that joint. Cutting element is this, and say fine, and there we are. Okay, now. <clears throat> I told you that because of symmetry, we have to split this thing into two. So I do another one. I do another one here. A split. Element to cut is that joint. Cutting element is that sketch. Oops. Uh, that, that is fine. I don't see a problem there. So. All right. So these things, I don't want it. You could have created this thing exactly like it is from the very beginning. That's entirely up to you. Perfectly acceptable. Good, good. And we don't have to join because I extruded, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we're going to uh, apply material to it. I think it says aluminum, so I'm going to select that part and apply aluminum to it. We say OK. Uh, let me save this thing. File, save management. Save as, I'll call this thing a new folder, uh, uh, mismatch in thickness. Oh, I forgot to tell you that the point of this uh, exercise, among other things, is that the top face and the side faces have different thicknesses. But if you join it and you put a, uh, and you put a thickness on it, both of those surfaces will uh, inherit that thickness. So we have to go and do a local 2D property. Remember that we did in beams? We're going to do the same thing. So now we're going to go to analysis and simulation. Uh, now, uh, I'll take you to generative structure analysis. Well, that's fine. Okay, very good. And uh, it's a static analysis that we're doing. We're going to mesh it because we join them. We can select the whole thing. It's going to get uh, it's going to get meshed. So let me make it smaller size because you can see that this is uh, one inch. So I'll make it smaller. So I'm making it point uh, five. See how it looks like. Maybe point three. How it looks like. And it's parabolic. No problem. So let me do a, a right click mesh visualization. Fine. But the problem says on this edge and on that edge, use a finer element. So let me show you how you do this. You go to Octree Triangle Measure. Um, actually, let me deactivate this first. Go to this Octree Triangle Mesh. There is a tab here, Local. 
and you want to uh, select the edge distribution this edge that at this edge and that edge both of them uh, let's make it uh, maybe 20 20 nodes on that and you can see what happens now if i say activate the mesh here's what happened you can see that around this hole i have a finer mesh around this hole i have a finer mesh so i showed you how to do this very good so deactivate that do the rest of the prop all right but these things if you don't want to see you probably can hide it yeah very good now uh the, this side is clamped okay and then this edge that edge and these two lie in the symmetry plane which is xz so user defined uncheck everything so that we don't make a mistake that edge and that edge and this edge and this edge they all lie in the exit plane of symmetry therefore no displacement in y and rotation is exactly the opposite good now comes the thickness of the uh, uh the folded sheet metal the top is 0.05 Oh, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. Maybe 0.01. Okay. Different thicknesses. 0 0.05, 0 0.01. All right. I don't know how I managed to. <laughs> okay, that, that's fine. Go up here. First, you make everything 0.05. Top was 0.05, yep, fake everything 0.05. So here is 2D property. Because I joined these things, it's going to put 0.05 on everything. 0.05, fine. A material has been created, a property has been created here. Put the cursor there, 2D property. Right click, local 2D property. You saw that for beams. You're going to do it here too. On this face, we put 0 0.01, thickness of 0 0.01. Select that. Yeah. And then say, OK, I selected this face, made this thing 0 0.01, and then say, OK. So the top is 0 0.05. The side is 0.01. All right. Now <clears throat> apply a force on that face, uh, on that edge, not the face. You can see that. You see this? These things, if they're bothering you, you can hide them. Let me go hide my restraints. There. These are the this is the force on that edge. And minus, please do not forget, minus 50, not 100 because you're putting a load of 100 on the whole thing, on the whole circle, this is half a circle, and then you have to divide it into. Let's save the analysis, file, save management. Here is the analysis, save as that folder. Run it. And hopefully things will not go crazy, and they won't. So the displacement is right here. You just need to average uh, two material shading. There we are. This is the displacement. Okay. And if you want to look at the stress, there we are. Now notice that because this thing, this vertical plate is actually thinner, the top plane actually displaces down it bends too but this is a lot flimsier that's why most of the stress becomes in that thinner sheet okay not that there's no stress there you can see that there's a number there okay but anyway this is what happened uh all right so that takes care of this problem
Okay, so what I want to do, let me get rid of these. I want to show you the at least how you make your model when it comes to activity. Now, these are, of course, these are posted, okay, separately on their activity in the morning and activity in the afternoon, but I want to show you also how to make the surface. And so let me go back here. Let's do work worry about this it says okay uh create a uh this bellville spring all right and find uh what is it now uh yeah make a model and then uh, uh, the idea was to find the stiffness of it now i didn't write the rest of this i didn't write the rest of this so i'll just show you please uh when you look at the activities read it carefully it says find the stiffness of this belt with this building. Actually, let me go ahead and find out. I don't have it here, so uh, uh, read it carefully. But all I want to show you is how to model this thing. And there are different ways of doing it. So I'll show you several different ways of creating this uh, uh, structure. This, uh, first of all, you have to realize that you need to use shell element. And it says what sector to use, a 40-degree sector, and uh, use... Uh, uh, the the surface measure in the advanced machine tool so i'm asking you to go there that's what i'm showing you okay let's take a break here oh i just noticed that actually it says do this thing to find the stiffness of the spring okay but that's okay i just want to show you the the, the process behind making this uh two different ways so we go to katia we start with the uh let's first do it directly in generative uh uh in generative uh, well, let's do it direct. Let's do it directly in uh, uh, wireframe and surface design part, and then I go back and do it with extracting surfaces. So part. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm not going to worry about dimensions. So let me go ahead and do it like this. So uh, on that face, I will sketch a line with the proper dimension and the angle, whatever is given to you. And exit, and then shaft it or revolve it, not shaft it. The sketch is taken, the uh, axis of rotation is Z. I don't want to go 360 degrees, let's say 40 degrees that you're told. There we are. So this is a 40 degree sector. Now, I'm asking you to mesh this thing, but go to the advanced machine tool, okay? So uh, first of all, let me, uh, let me, if you, if, if you just want the element to generate the elements, we don't need even material. Later on, if the thickness has to be defined and it has to be defined, you have to put material on it. To the property, you need material on it. Otherwise, it won't run, it has to know where. But to just to do the meshing, you don't. You know what? Just so that you can see it better, let me make this thing uh, 80 degrees so that you can see it better. That's all. There we are. Okay. Now, we're going to go to, look Look at what happened, analysis and simulation, but I want to do the meshing in the advanced meshing tool. You click on it. Oh, uh, yeah, find static analysis. Now, if you look at the type of elements, first of all, you recognize this fellow. You recognize this fellow. This is the same one that you have used before in the uh, uh, generative structure analysis. But these are called surface measure and advanced surface measure. Okay, you just click on the surface measure. Let me show you what happened. You click on it. You select that. Then you give a number, and then you say okay. Color turns out like that. Let me move these things out so that you can see it. Actually, that's not what I want. I'm going to take this out. You see this? You see this? Mesh the part. Click. And then say OK. And change the rendering of exit. Exit. All right. Uh, now, what about the size? If you, if you go here, if you go back to generative structure analysis and say, show me the mesh. It's a terrible mesh, you see that, terrible. So back there, make this thing point, uh, I don't know, point two. Okay, fine. 
All right, exit, exit. See that? This is the exit. Let me, let me turn this thing. Exit, gone. And now go back to the, well, where you're already there. Very good. Now activate the mesh. A lot nicer. You see this? Remember, tri tri this, these are not triangles, okay? These are quad elements, quad shell elements. And the only way you can get it, if you do it in advanced, advanced version, sometimes maybe triangle, right there, right there. So if you want to get a quad mesh, you have to do it in advanced, you have to do it in uh, uh, advanced meshing tool and you have to do a surface mesher. There's no ifs and buts. Okay, so let me get rid of this. I'm going to do this thing a different way. Start with a part fire. Okay. On that vertical plane, I will sketch something like that. Because I'm going to make a 3D part and then extract the surface. Exit. Now we want to do a 3D part here, so you better be in part design. Here is a sh here is a, a shaft. Okay, it's selected the sketch because it was pre-selected, and about the Z axis. Well, I just say, uh, or I use, uh, what, what is it? I use the uh, 80 degrees or six, seven, 80 degrees. I use 80 degrees so you can see it right there. And now I have to extract that face. So we go to mechanical design, wireframe and surface design, get the extract thingy out. Here's the extract icon, select that, and then say, okay. And notice that that has been extracted. The only thing is that if you go, for example, if you go to generative structure analysis, if you go there, it sees a solid part and immediately it meshes it. Immediately. Okay? The alternative is to go to advanced meshing tool. There we are. Use a surface mesher. I use point 0.2. Okay, fine. Mesh it. This is. This is where you're meshing it. Right there. And then exit. And now if you go to the generative structure analysis, that guy is in hiding. It didn't mesh it because of what I did, because of the way I did it. And if you want to see your mesh, right click mesh visualization, there we are. So because I went to the advanced advanced meshing tool first and used the surface mesher and I, I went there, uh, it did not mesh the solid. If I had gone to the uh, first to the generative structure analysis, it would mesh that solid object in the hiding. And then you have to delete it, delete that mesh and delete the 3D property of it, and then proceed with the rest of the problem. Now, uh, I want to do the other activity and create this for you several ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. First, without making a sphere, just a solid object. So let me close that. Close this. Uh, what sector is that? It says take a, I don't know, uh, 45 degree sector. Okay, fine. So let's start with the part file. On that vertical plane, I will sketch. A circle like that, only that much. Exit, and then revolve it about the z axis by uh, 45 right there that's one way and then the rest is the same if you want to mesh this thing in advanced meshing tool you go to start 
you can uh, analyze some simulation, advanced machine tool. You're doing a static analysis, surface measure, select that, put a number that uh, gives you a good size mesh. So click on the icon which says mesh the part. There we are. Good. Close it. And then the rest is the same. In other words, you go to the uh, analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis, you apply the, the load, you apply the restraint, etc. These The load, restraint, and all these cannot be done in the uh, advanced meshing tool because advanced meshing tool says mesh, meshing. <laughs> all right, so let's kill that. I'm going to do it a different way. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with part file once, once again. Good. So why don't we make a sphere, a full sphere here? Uh, full sphere. At center, we're going to make zero, zero, zero. And whatever the radius is, we can make it bigger, smaller. Okay, very good. And then you split it. Here is the split. Let's split it with this side, with this plane. Uh, sorry, cancel that. Let's try it again. Uh, split. It says element to cut is that whole sphere. Cutting element is, for example, let's take a vertical one. And then another one, horizontal one. I think you have to do it uh, separately. So we say fine. Another one. There, this fellow. Cancel. Try it again. Element to cut is this. Cutting element is that. Uh, now, yeah, right there. And then another one. Element to cut is a spear. Cutting element is this plane. There we are. And you, have, you could have controlled the angle too. I didn't pay attention to that. But anyway, that's one option. Let me do it a different way for you. The rest of it, meshing and things like that, is the same. Let's start with the part file. So because I'm going to make a three-dimensional object and then extract the surfaces, so I'm going to go to part design. Uh, say on that plane, I will sketch. How about half a circle? And then close it because shaft that it has to be closed from here to here exit revo uh, shaft it about the z axis there we are this is a solid object now i can cut it i can cut it now into pieces or i can exact surfaces and then do it let me do it now so uh, uh, split with this plane, doesn't matter which side you pick, pick with that plane. Okay, fine. And with this plane, uh, which one is it? This one? Fine. And now we have to extract. As soon as you extract the surface, you can't do it here. You have to be in the uh, wireframe and surface design. And there is the extract thingy. Extract that. You say okay. All right. Fine. And let me put some material on this part. I want to have a reason for doing this. Now notice that because of the way I'm doing it, if I go to analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis, it will mesh this solid object, and then you have to delete it. If I go to the advanced meshing tool, no problem. I can I can directly uh, mesh that surface without affecting the solid object. But let me go to generative structure analysis so that I get this mesh that I don't want. This is a 3D stuff. I don't want it in this particular problem. So I'm going to delete the delete that guy and delete delete this. If you want to get a fancy mesh, you can go to the uh, Advanced machine tool, no problem. If you're not interested in the in that, uh, you know, uh, fancy mesh, you click on the triangular mesh right there, and fine. 
and do, don't forget to do the property later on. You need the property, whatever it is. And then you take this, this you can hide, no problem. And if you want to see your mesh, right click mesh visualization there. All right, folks. So I uh, already told you how to go about in, in your activities. Of course, these are posted as usual and uh, work on it. And then last 30 minutes is going to be the quiz.